details of how you might be able to get some money back if you're prepared to use your various appliances, whether they be dishwashers or whatever, washing machines at a certain time of day. Conservative MP and Climate Minister Graham Stewart joins me now. It's the front page of uh, many of this morning's newspapers. Can you give me a little more detail on that particular scheme and just how perilous currently are our supplies? Good morning to you. Uh, Good morning. Well, overall, our position is actually pretty strong, particularly related to our European neighbours. We produce nearly half our own gas. We've got major supplies from Norway, which is a reliable partner, and we've got the second largest liquid natural gas uh, infrastructure in Europe. So actually, we're in a pretty strong position. The national grid uh, did, uh, as they do every year, produce their analysis of the sort of risks for this coming winter. Um, And uh, they've said that the risks are higher uh, than they've been in previous years, obviously in the context of the Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine. Um, But that uh, shortages in the UK on sort of were were very unlikely. And on all the central scenarios, uh, we should be in a good position. But, How much can we rely uh, on Norway, though? I understand their supplies are diminishing. Uh, the, no, the Norwegian um, gas supplies, uh, as opposed to their electricity and the hydro, which is slightly different, um, uh, there is no diminution in, right. uh, in Norwegian gas supply. Um, the um, in, in terms of... So we've worked with Ofgem and uh, National Grid and others t- to make sure we've got the maximum flex we can in the very unlikely uh, scenario that there was a, uh, a supply shortage, and that's why coming up with, um, we've worked with them, they're talking to the big gas users in the commercial sector okay. about uh, a voluntary scheme there where they might um, uh, you know, be paid to reduce their demand at peak moments. Because it, for us, it's all about the peak. It's about meeting these peaks rather than the kind of overall usage so, in terms of security of supply. And likewise, uh, using the, the smart meter, um, a technology that's been installed in many homes to allow... Um, people to again voluntarily, uh, you know, reduce their usage and get rewarded for doing so. so how we will do that, that reward then, happen? How do how do they physically get that reward, then, Minister? Uh, 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 that is being uh, led by Ofgem, and I can't. I'm not. Uh, personally responsible for the means in which that's delivered, so I don't quite know, but okay. we're supporting them to come up with practical so, schemes that allow that to happen. Can you rule out rationing this winter? Um, well, the national grid, we get to do it uh, independently. They do their assessment. They've said it's very unikely that we would need... So you can't rule uh, it out? To, uh, it's, well, it's a bit of a change to in tone, anything. you know, Minister. The prime, Sorry, when she was the leadership candidate, now Prime Minister told me in Wembley, at Wembley in August that she was ruling out rationing. Here we are, I don't know, seven, eight weeks on, another broken promise. Can't rule it out, can you? Um, well, I'm not sure if that's entirely fair. Well, but, rule it uh, out then, Minister. The, tell, me, tell me here and now... 7.53, Friday the 7th of October, we'll have no rationing. Just say it now and we'll all move on. Uh, uh, we are not planning um, to have that. Not it is same, not is our it? intention to have it, and we're doing everything possible to mean that it, it should not happen. But it's, you know, we've, we've got... Well, when you've we've seen changed the, our tone, because, the Euro- because in you see August the she told me it wouldn't happen, sir. Yeah, well, events move on, as you well know, and we've seen all sorts of threats to our um, energy security. We've seen uh, Nord Stream. We've seen all sorts of issues. And in, and we keep, as any responsible government does, we keep these things under advisement and we let the independent what? experts tell us the various scenarios across the piece. What I'm pleased right. to tell you and your listeners is that it's very unlikely and that actually we have a strong system we can be proud of the fact that you know our renewables is so is so strong okay. it was just seven percent of our electricity was renewables in 2010 now it's over 40 right. percent um so Minister. you know we're in a pretty strong position but what? we are responsible and we look at every possibility what can the fantastic body of men and women who, and children who are listening to my show now what can they <laughs> do in practical terms to help what advice is there um well because of the nature of our system, in terms of making sure that we don't have those problems, it's about the peaks. It's about meeting demand at the peak. Um, and that's why, as I say, off German talking to the big gas users and potentially uh, talking to consumers about uh, the peak moments as well. In other countries, it's more about reducing overall energy use. For us, it's not so much about that. It's about reducing the demand at time of peak. So that's why we're, you know, we're not, there, there's lots of advice out there on uh, gov.uk and through Ofgem on helping reduce energy use in order to lower your prices, in order yeah. to you know, right. help the climate. But uh, people do not need uh, uh, 
from an energy security point of view, we are not telling people that they need to cut their energy use. What, um, why we'd do always we, encourage uh, people to what, be as responsible as possible in, in, in its use, but that's not because of this energy security issue. I, I read in one newspaper, The Times, that Jacob Rees-Mogg, the business secretary, had signed off on a £15 million public information campaign advising people to perhaps turn down their boilers, turn off the heating if they were going out, but it's been rejected. Why do you per- oppose a public information campaign? Well, I've, I've just explained the nature of our system. So no, no, we the public have information camp- campaign. Why, why wouldn't you spend no, no, no. a relatively small amount of money to help get your message across? Well, the message, as I've just said, is about at peak time. So encouraging people to have a shower rather than a bath um, no, no, at my, my central point two is, in the afternoon makes no difference. No, no, my, I mean, you, I'm sure you're well, hang on, minister, My central up. point is why no public information campaign? Uh, well, there is public information through gov.uk, through Ofgem, as I've said. I'm obviously um, asking this question the, in a very faulty manner. Let me try one last time. Jacob rees who's fairly senior in the government, authorised yep, and signed off on a, 15 mil- oh, indeed, a £15 million pound public information campaign, which I, re- I read the Prime Minister, another of your bosses, and I have many bosses as well, is, quotes, <laughs> ideologically opposed to. Why? Why does the Prime Minister not agree with a relatively small amount of money? I'd be very happy, and I'm sure you would if anybody wanted to give us 15 million quid, but to help the public know what to do. Why would she be opposed to that, Minister? Uh, well, I, 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 I have explained um, that, it, you know, technically, um, a, a general campaign about reducing energy would probably make no difference to our energy security. So that would be a good reason not to do it. Um, uh, we're also hesitant, um, uh, you know, to uh, tell people what they should do. We're, n- we're not a nanny state government. Um, and if uh, what we are prepared to do is talk to the big energy users and talk to consumers with, with smart technology about um, well, rewarding them for reducing energy at the peak time. So having the danger is if you had a sort of general, you know, use less energy message is that the wrong... Uh, lessons would be taken on board by people, but I, as the what climate minister, would always think. Uh, uh, well, that that they would be helping um, by reducing, uh, helping energy security by reducing their energy use at two in the afternoon, for instance. It, they wouldn't. Um, that's but not the nature of our energy it out system. In the campaign. Last, if you, we'll move on. If you spelled it out in the campaign, of course they could use more energy. Basically, people want to help. Uh, yes, and then that's why you need to do the right approach to help them, and that's why uh, Ofgem are talking to um, people about reducing it at peak times if it's right. necessary. But that on all the central scenarios, it won't be necessary, though I would, as you would expect, Nick, as the climate minister, always encourage people to use less energy because it helps the family bills, keeps the, helps with the cost of living, and is good for the environment if we are more efficient in our use of energy. And that's why we've, right. we've come forward. We're spending six billion in this parliament to uh, re- improve energy efficiency. And we saw announcements from the chancellor just uh, a week or so ago, again, supporting various schemes to improve energy efficiency, insulation and the like. OK, we've only got a couple of minutes. I've referenced the prime minister prior to, prior to her elevation. One of her posts was chief secretary to the Treasury. And at that point, at that time, she decided or authorised the closure of the rough gas storage facility in the North Sea. You may be aware the chief city commentator at the Daily Telegraph, Ben Marlow, says today, quotes, the decision to close rough, Centrica's giant natural gas storage site under the North Sea in 2017, ranks as one of the most short-sighted and reckless acts than any recent government has committed. Why would she have sanctioned such an irresponsible move? Um, well, the rough um, site is off my constituency and we're... It- was our largest gas storage, but I, it's, I've already talked about the nature of our system, um, which isn't fundamentally based on, we've got such diversity of supply, um, and it's a sort of real-time system, that uh, if you look at rough, it, it, it can, and in this context, uh, which is why we've looked to uh, recommission it, 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 um, it, it, it provides very uh, slow um, Back up for the system is is all I'd say. Which is, it, you know, it has a it, it can have a role to play. But uh, it was given the situation at the time. I would say, and I can say as an energy minister, it was a, a rational decision. Um, but, and I don't recognise the language that was was used but, there. It, but, it, it it wasn't some it wasn't a crazy decision um, to shut down this thing, given the nature 
of our energy system and the diversity of our supply. But as a result, I read, we moved to a just-in-time approach to gas supply, which possibly is going to catch us out this winter, is it not? Well, on all the central scenarios, it isn't. Um, and we have a better security of supply uh, than most of our European neighbours. So I, I don't recognise that. But we are, right. we are determined going forward, having had this phenomenal shock, to make our system more resilient. And reopening rough has been one element of that, as has uh, uh, commissioning coal-fired power stations to remain available um, for a, a little longer. And longer term, we are, uh, we are looking to negotiate long-term security of supply deals with reliable right. partners and earlier this year we saw Centrica and Equinor um, uh, you know sign a deal adding another billion um, cubic okay. meters of gas uh, to our system each year enough to heat about two million homes so we're, we're taking steps um, right. going forward. Minister I hope you will attend COP27 in Egypt in a month or so's time shouldn't King Charles III be there? Uh, it's not for me to tell the sovereign whether he should or shouldn't well, be. Well it's reported the Prime Minister event. told him he can't go Do you have a response to that? Um, I, I don't. I, I can't uh, comment on that. Whether the king goes to uh, Sharm, I would have thought would be up to him, although ministers doubtless would advise. Uh, and um, the we note that hospitals, if there are blackouts, and I hear you say that it's a perilously low possibility, hospitals would be spared. As a former chair of the Education Select Committee, were power cuts to, or shortages or rationing to be required, would schools be exempted as well? Uh, we have planning for all sorts of circumstances and uh, we make sure that we have a kind of a, a sense of the order in which uh, in extremist well, things would schools, happen. But, would schools be exempted? Um, uh, the, uh, I, I'm, all I can tell you is that the, on the central scenario we're not expecting it and I, don't, I can't give you some categorical answer on that because I don't know the answer to it. Finally, as an individual, if you don't mind my asking, what are you doing to try and conserve energy? Um, well, I think like everyone else, just uh, recognising the bills and well, looking at my Well, I haven't even turned the heating on yet, and I, I, you know, I'm running around in an extra... If it goes on much longer, I don't want to uh, upset your morning and ruin your cornflakes, I might have to buy thermal underwear. So I just wonder what you're doing, because I'm not turning on that heating until November. I've, ple I've pledged so to do. Um, well, I would encourage people to make sure that they keep themselves warm, that they look to uh, insulate um, their properties as sensibly as possible. But we're not in the business of, uh, you know, uh, bossing people about and telling them what to do but you know given the prices even with the government intervention phenomenally generous as it is um, protecting so many jobs and so many families this winter uh, clearly we're all um, you know switching that light off a bit quicker Absolutely. Um, and making sure I well I, I know what am I doing I'm making sure I, I keep my washing a bit longer bought a few more cheap socks so that I don't <laughs> I don't I don't put the lo I don't put the machine on until it's pretty full um, and I then worry about whether it's overly full given <laughs> you know what the numbers on the front but um, that's 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 the kind of thing I'm doing and I imagine everybody else yep. is doing the same just because it's it helps protect your bills, which are um, I'm with you. you know, a I'm bit with high. You. I'm with you, Minister. It looked like I was rushing the team. The whole first 15 kit yesterday in my washing machine. Grateful to you. Thank you, Climate Minister Graham Stewart, appearing here on LBC. Three after eight. News is next. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's